In a world where so many stocks look expensive, especially names like Apple and Amazon, I believe there is one tech giant that has just given us a rare buying opportunity. Let's do it. What's going on everybody? My name is Matthew. Welcome back to my channel and today we are talking all things Google. Now before you click away and say Google, that's so boring, let me at least try and explain to you why I think this is a potentially exciting long-term buying opportunity. First, you guys love the technical analysis aspect of my last video, Top Stocks for August. I'll link it right here. So we're going to start off with that. Technical analysis on why perhaps you may want to buy Google now. Second, a look at their Q2 earnings report. Was it really that bad? Third, we'll wrap it up with Google versus the rest of Fang. Why Google's growth might be slow down. Let's get started with part one, some technical analysis on Google. A lot of you asked which platform I'm using for technical analysis. I just use TD Ameritrade's Thinkorswim. It's free and it comes with my TD Ameritrade account. It's not sponsored. It's just what I use. So let's get into it. All right. So this is Google's six month chart here and I drew a channel with two red lines. So this is the price action and each candlestick represents one day and it's bounced off this red line one and two and now three times. So Google reached highs of 1586 before dropping down to the 1450s and approaching our red trend line on the bottom of the channel. And if we zoom in, we can see Google has had a couple of green days here bouncing off of the red trend line that we drew. And I personally think that Google will be able to continue this trend upwards. I've been wanting to get into Google for a while now for a long term hold and I figured now was as good a time as any. So I entered at about 1474 and of course I alerted all my top tier patrons in the discord. By the way, a link to the Patreon and Discord Discord is the first link in the description below. You'll join our community of investors. We talk about stocks every day. We have over 500 people in the Discord and top tier patrons are alerted every time I make a purchase or a sale of a stock. So that was some very, very basic technical analysis on my part. I'm still improving my TA, but I've come to learn that the combination of technical analysis and fundamental analysis, which is what I usually do on this channel, are a very powerful combination. So let's dive into the fundamental analysis of Google in part two, were their Q2 earnings really that bad? Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple all reported on the same day and it was absolutely crazy. When do you ever see all of the big four reporting together? But unfortunately, Google was heavily overshadowed shadowed by Amazon who 10 x Wall Street's estimates and Apple and Facebook who also had stellar reports. Google, technically Alphabet, reported its first ever year over year decline in revenue. Google's search advertising revenue growth has been slowing down dramatically in Q1 and Q2 of 2020, primarily due to the Rony Rona. But in their earnings call, the CFO of Google said that they believe it is premature to gauge the durability of recent trends given the obvious uncertainty of the global environment. Meaning as investors, maybe we shouldn't put too much emphasis on this declining trend in ad revenue growth and here's why. Alphabet itself cut marketing spending by half and froze hiring for the second half of the year in anticipation of a slowdown. So with less marketing, that probably means less business. Additionally, one analyst points out that in 2019, travel ads made up for 10% of all search ads, accounting for $10.7 billion of Google's $98 billion search revenue again in 2019. 10% is pretty significant and for obvious reasons, travel ads aren't really showing up a lot nowadays. And look at this, the difference between Q2 2019's Google search revenue and Q2 2020's Google search revenue is a decline of 2.323 billion or nearly a 10% decline. Coincidence? I think not. Now, personally, I do actually think that Google search ad revenue will slow down in the future and over the long term, but we'll talk about that later. For now, I don't think it will continue to be this bad though. And the reason I put so much emphasis on Google search revenue is because Google search made up more than 55% of Google's quarterly revenue. It's also where I think Google is in the most danger from competitors, but again, more on that later. Refocusing on the rest of the Q2 report, Google did show revenue growth in specific areas. YouTube ads increased by $0.2 billion, which is good, but honestly a bit disappointing. However, there is something you can do to help YouTube boost their revenue for Google. And that of course is smashing that like button if you found any value in this video. Okay, Google Cloud also increased by 40%, which is great, but Google still only has a very small slice of the pie when it comes to cloud market share. Now, before we move on to part three, comparing Google to the rest of Fang, which I personally think is the most interesting part of this video, Here's a little reminder of just how strong Google's balance sheet is. 
They have $17 billion in cash and only $4 billion in long-term debt. Not to mention, they're borrowing money at incredibly low rates right now. They have $278 billion in total assets and only $71 billion in total liabilities. And with $149 billion in current assets and only $43.6 billion in current liabilities, Google has a current ratio of about 3.4, and remember anything above 1 is usually a sign of good near-term financial health. With a balance sheet like that, Google is not going anywhere anytime soon. Alright, now for part 3, Google versus the rest of FANG. Alright, so for this part of the video, we're going to first compare Google stock to the rest of FANG stocks this year, and then we're going to see is the difference justified. As you can see, Google is up 11% this year, which would usually be be great for any other year and any other time, but compared to FANG in this environment, it is lagging pretty hard. Now I've heard people argue that Google should be up there with the rest of FANG because they're always grouped together, so why is the stock price lagging? You should buy Google now. Well, not so fast. Here's why I think there is such a big difference in stock price and I actually think it is warranted. Without getting into too much detail, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Netflix are for the most part experiencing very strong growth during this lockdown and Google is not. I want to first say that I think Fang is so expensively priced because they're viewed as a high yielding asset that because of their balance sheets is relatively safe. Not so sure about Netflix, but Apple, Amazon, Facebook for sure. And I think investors are flocking to these assets because of inflation and the fact that, you know, savings accounts and other safer investments are yielding practically nothing. So Fang has that going for them. They're also borrowing money at insanely low rates. And then Apple, Amazon, and Facebook report killer earnings. Of course, they're going to go up in my opinion. But Google did not have those same stellar earnings and when it comes to ads, the top players are Facebook, Amazon, and Google, so let's talk about them. In Q2, Amazon's other category, which is primarily made up of its advertising business, was up 41% year over year. Facebook had a 10% year over year increase in ad revenue this past quarter as well. But as we already pointed out, Google had a 10% year over year decrease in search ad revenue, and YouTube ad revenue did not impress. And I think Google search revenue is struggling because of the shift of advertising from search to social media and e-commerce. By social media advertising, I mean the ads that you see while scrolling through Instagram, going on Facebook, or even going through Snapchat. Social media advertising is where the world is headed in my opinion, and that's why Facebook is one of my biggest holdings. If you want more reasons on why I bought Facebook, I actually made a video about it right here. But Google doesn't have a horse in the social media advertising race, and I think that's a problem. Facebook has steadily increased its ad market share from 1.5% in 2009 to 23.8% in 2019, while Google's been stagnant. And now with e-commerce advertising, the ads you see while shopping online, I think Google is gonna lose that to Amazon too. Nowadays, a lot of people are just going straight to Amazon whenever they need to buy something. They don't even bother looking it up on Google search first. This obviously puts more eyes on Amazon's ads and less traffic to Google. And I think this is why Google is endangered like I mentioned earlier in this video. They really need to either start innovating in these two spaces, social and e-commerce advertising, or they should acquire someone to help them get in this race. Otherwise, Google search ad I think is just going to stagnate. That being said, I think Google does have a big opportunity still in YouTube and again I'm surprised their revenue did not increase more during this lockdown for YouTube ads. YouTube is one of the world's most popular search engines and it's the second most popular social media platform with 1.9 billion users. 500 hours of videos are uploaded every minute and 1 billion hours of YouTube are watched every day, more than Netflix and Facebook videos combined. So there's still opportunity there and of course there is Google Cloud. However with Google Cloud, I'm kind of leaning more towards the too little too late camp for Google. Google only has about 6% of market share in the cloud space which is already dominated by Microsoft and Amazon and I think Google can definitely capture more but can they be a dominant player? I'm not really sure. But I don't want to end this video on a Google has no hope note. In fact, I think it's just the opposite. I think Google is virtually indestructible and I think you should never doubt the innovation of a company like Google. In fact, look at Apple. A lot of people doubted Apple's innovation in 2018 thinking they were out of new products to create but just look at them now. Now, I don't think Google will be a very exciting stock to own. I think it's just nice and steady, and that's what a lot of investors like anyway. And from pretty much strictly a technical analysis standpoint, I like this as an entry point for Google, but again, I am not a financial advisor. If you found any value in this video, and I hope you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and read your quote of the day, you might just learn something. Make sure to follow me on Instagram for daily posts about my portfolio, stocks I'm watching, and all that good stuff. If you're watching at this point in the video, thank you so much 
you are the real MVPs. Don't forget your peace and thank yous.